Welcome to Digital Oil and Gas with Jeffrey Can. I'm Jeffrey. Digital Oil and Gas looks at the impact of digital technology on the global oil and gas industry. If you want to discuss this week's topic further or just stay in touch, you can always reach me at Jeffrey Can on Twitter or at jeffreycan.com. This podcast is entitled SpaceX and its odd new interest in fossil fuel. SpaceX's odd new interest in traditional fossil fuel energy could underlie its interplanetary ambitions. Earthly energy suppliers should take note. Beware the digital giants. A few years ago, the annual general meeting of the Deloitte Canada Partners was held in Quebec City, and the featured speaker was Sir Richard Branson of Virgin fame. The conversation on stage revolved around Virgin's penchant for targeting industries that were slow to change, and one fearless soul asked if Virgin was targeting the auditing and tax professional services sector. Branson cheerfully replied, No, not at this time, but you should pray that we don't, or words to that effect. The implication was that his team of analysts continually scoured the world for opportunities to bring Virgin's disruption ethos to new markets, and unfortunately for auditors everywhere, auditing was not yet on the menu. But the message was clear. We looked at you, but the timing wasn't right. Many industries discover too late that they're in someone's crosshairs. Digital Giants and Fossil Fuels Digitally capable companies have been interested in energy for some time, such as solar power and wind farms, but not fossil fuels. Obscured in all the news coming out of Europe recently was a brief story about how the SpaceX organization, which is owned by Elon Musk of Tesla fame, and it has an interest in whatever hydrocarbons might lie beneath its rocket launch facility in Boca Chica, Texas. SpaceX subsidiary Lone Star Mineral Development believes it successfully purchased the mineral rights to the Lapita lease, an exploration block, which is very close to the launch pad. Apparently, the site has been inactive since 2015, which is not a surprise given the global price collapse at the time. As is usual in America, litigation rules. The former operator of the site, Dallas Petroleum Group, has embarked in a court challenge to dispute Lone Star's evolving interest in the site. Mr. Musk has been quoted as both aiming to put the oil and gas industry into the history books and hoping not to demonize the industry until his plans come to fruition. So it comes as a surprise, to me, that SpaceX is interested in hydrocarbon production. Is this a virgin moment for the gas industry, where it is suddenly targeted by a digital transformation specialist? SpaceX and other similar businesses, like Virgin Galactic and Amazon Blue Origin, have been making tremendous progress in the last several years. By bringing the iterative development model, or Agile, to the rocket business, these companies have permanently upset the traditional approach to rocket design and space travel. Their success is hard to dispute. SpaceX, for example, suffered six consecutive launch failures when they first began, but then launched 111 successfully in a row. Launches are no longer even newsworthy events. SpaceX rockets are gigantic and can lift extraordinary loads relative to the loads from 50 years ago. Traditional rockets required all payloads, that's satellites, equipment, tools, vehicles, instruments, to be shrunk by weight and volume so that each launch maximized its load and fit into this very small payload space. SpaceX doesn't face that constraint to the same degree, which means much less time and money is spent retrofitting gear for space travel. SpaceX also reuses its fuel tanks and launch rockets, not by dropping them empty into the ocean for recovery, but by actually flying them back and landing them where they can be quickly reused. Some components require a month to inspect, replace some consumed fittings, and refuel for the next lift, but other components turn around in a day. These design concepts, large-scale, return-to-base, high reusability, fast turnaround, and iterative improvements, means that the frequency of launches is rising fast and the cost is falling quickly. 
Launching a rocket is not without its risks, of course, and 111 successes in a row do not yet constitute a sufficient track record of flawless performance to conclude that the risk is eliminated. But nevertheless, the progress is very encouraging. It goes without saying that the traditional rocket businesses have been quite thoroughly disrupted. The challenge faced by all rocketeers is the amount and type of fuel required to free a projectile from whatever gravitational force is holding that rocket to its terrestrial resting place. Agencies, and to date, it's largely been government-funded rocketry, have used a variety of fuels for their needs, and in most cases, the fuels are of the fossil variety. Despite decades of research on energy sources, we're still a long ways off from an alternative, portable, low-cost, safe, and reliable fuel suitable for space travel. SpaceX's ambition is to fly regularly to Mars, which then creates the need for a fuel to make the return trip. One fuel source that Mars has in a kind of uncertain amount is methane, a fuel that the gas industry is quite accustomed to exploiting. We know how to handle it, extract it, chill it, store it, clean it, and consume it. One option for SpaceX is to carry the fuel all the way to Mars for the return journey. That would require a lot of flights to build up the supply of fuel. A second option is to use Mars' store of methane. Other fuels such as hydrogen might be preferable because methane is encumbered with a low-value but weighty carbon molecule which on combustion coats your equipment with soot. Offsetting the disadvantage is the absence of regulations on Mars about resource extraction and greenhouse gas emissions. The technical problems that SpaceX now needs to solve are how to extract a fuel, such as methane, on Mars, purify that fuel compound of any undesirable components, chill it to a liquid state, and load it into a rocket tank. In theory, SpaceX could turn to the natural gas industry for technical assistance. But one of the secrets of Tesla's success has been to eschew the incumbent industrial players in the auto sector in favor of owning the supply chain problems end-to-end. There are many reasons for this. Here are three. Hubris. The incumbents in any industry often think they know better, making them close-minded to alternatives. The auto industry repeated a we-know-better narrative to itself until it was too late. Now Tesla is worth as much as the next six auto companies combined. And then value retention. Incumbents are often misdirected by the value attributed to their legacy solutions and fail to recognize the value at stake from a disruption. Toyota has 70 years of experience and hundreds and millions of vehicles manufactured but now feels that Tesla has a six-year lead in vehicle electronics. Tesla's only 13 years old as a company. And finally, vested interests. Incumbents often capture regulatory processes and have perfected practices which lock them into decisions from the past or scale economies that can't be easily unwound. Newcomers can then devise creative new solutions that incumbents can't easily replicate or adopt. Tesla built its business from the ground up using robots, whereas other auto companies are saddled with high labor cost models, unions, and pensions. The Emerging Risks It is actually good news for humanity that a digital company is now about to invest in figuring out the fossil fuel extraction business. But it might not be good news for resource companies and their supply chains. SpaceX is likely to bring the Silicon Valley model of agile decision-making, iterative development, and digital smarts to bear. Lone Star is a startup, and unencumbered by the industry's legacy business model, supply chain, and solutions design. Their focus will be to source fuel for their rockets and to solve the technical problems of a fully autonomous, off-planet gas business model. They can further benefit from the drilling know-how of the Boring Company, another Tesla company, or I should say another Musk company, and the telecoms know-how from the Starlink satellite network, also owned by Musk. And by locating to Texas, which is not environmentally and restrictive and as high cost as California, the company can source some gas know-how. Where other gas players build their business around a high labor, technically skilled model, SpaceX will be using robots. 
where gas companies today restrict their designs around constraints, like telecoms networks, Lone Star will crack through these challenges with edge devices, not uh, dependent on persistent telecoms. Where incumbents today start with the rules and standards they help write and processes they perfected, Lone Star will throw away the rulebook because they're solving for Mars challenges where the rules and processes don't apply. And along the way, Lone Star is almost certain to discover dramatically better ways of working that will equally apply to the gas industry on Earth. These could put Lone Star years ahead of gas companies, in the same way that Tesla is now years ahead of Toyota. Incumbents are almost certain to fall into the automaker's folly of the dismissive narrative, the misguided conclusions about Lone Star's inevitable early failures, and the failure to spot both the short-term implications for their earthly business and the longer-term opportunity to be part of space colonization. So in conclusion, the smart money in gas is on notice to swallow its pride, discount its business value, and throw away its rule book for the chance to work with Lone Star and learn how to do gas at the speed of digital.